All right, we're back with another episode. Uh, this is a great one. Uh, this is going to be an awesome Saturday episode. I'm really excited. Uh, first, I want to take a minute. I want to thank the sponsors. Head over to www.johnbartoloshow.com. Go check out all the sponsors there. There's so many great ones. I want to give a special thanks to Volkortsen, uh, Volkortsen Firearms this week. Uh, Scott makes some awesome stuff. Go check it out. Uh, big thanks to Volkortsen this week. And uh, can't thank them enough for all that they do. And this is a special week. Now, uh, the guest I have today, is really phenomenal and has a great story and we're going to get into it and it's unique in a sense of where she lives and what you know she's about and just I really love the vibe she throws off right in the you know from our brief conversations beforehand but we got the one and only Baywatch's own actress Donna Dierico what's going on Donna Hey, how's it going? It's going. So this is <laughs> this is interesting. We were talking about Corona and everything else. Now you have a great story, and you grew up in the South. We were talking about this offline. How I got to ask because maybe some people don't know. How did it all lead up to Baywatch to kind of start this off? And you know, what did what what, what where do your roots come from? What do you what's in your blood? Well, I like you mentioned. I mean, I, I was born in southern Alabama in a little town called Dothan and my dad was in the military and we ended up settling and I grew up in Columbus Georgia right on the border of Alabama and all my relatives you know all my southern relatives um we're all it's small town stuff not Atlanta not Birmingham but little small towns and it's that small town mentality so um I went to visit somebody on the West coast and it was going to be like a week long visit, but it turned into, I never wanted to go back to the South because I, I realized that there's big cities out out there and um, stuff going on. There's bright lights. And I was just really hard to go back to the very small town. You got the bug. Um, I did. So, and I'd always wanted to be an actress ever since I was little and I starred in school plays and things like that. But at the time, now, you know, now there's tons of studios and stuff in, in Atlanta and everything shoots there. Back when I was growing up, there was no mm. kind of, you know, there was nothing there. So there was no way to make a living as an actress in Columbus, Georgia. So once I got out to the West Coast, I got a manager. And really the first thing that I did was Playboy. And I was discovered by a Playboy Playmate talent scout, which I didn't even know there was such a thing shopping in an Albertson's grocery store. Wow. And um, so after I appeared in Playboy, um, I started getting a bunch of, you know, like everybody did married with children and unhappily ever after and Mm. those kinds of shows. And I did like a big uh, national commercial with Chris Elliott Mm. back when he was doing those Tostitos commercials. Mm -hmm. And so then from there, I got an audition for Baywatch Night. Um, which was sort of the spinoff show of Baywatch. Right. And and I was on that, and then they rolled my character over onto Baywatch. So then I was on both shows at the same time, Baywatch Nights and Baywatch. And I just went, you know, almost overnight from being an unknown little small-town southern girl to being on the number one show in the world. Crazy. And it was it was nuts, and um, but I've kept my small town kind of mentality and lifestyle, and I haven't let go of that. I never, I'm never in, I've never been in in the tabloids for scandals or you know stuff like that. I don't do drugs. I've never descended into that kind of thing. I, I've stayed my same self, but it was a big, you know, a big change in my uh, life. Yeah, I would imagine it's you kind of got shot out of a cannon and it's, you know, it's a lot to process. And how do you keep, yeah. you know, how do you keep your mind right through that? I, I couldn't even imagine. Oh, well, honestly, um, I, I've i been very open about the fact that I'm a practicing traditional Roman Catholic. I was raised like that and I grew up with it. I went to an all Catholic grade school and high school and uh, we were taught by nuns and I've held on to that. I mean, I let it go for a little while. Once I I moved out here and I did Playboy, I kind of, I don't know, I I rebelled and I let it go fall, my my face fall to the wayside. But then after I filed for divorce um, from my ex-husband, I, it was a really, um, 
acrimonious divorce. So I needed something to, you know, ground me and I returned to the church and, um, you know, I had, I had to do one of those, um, um, general confessions Mm. because it's been so many years since I went to confession. I had to do a general confession where you just say all your worst sins that you can remember. Um, and then just say, and everything else that I, that I've done in the last, whatever, 10 years. So I did one of those and I returned to the church and, um, and I've just been back ever since. And I think that's what keeps me grounded. Yeah. I think I read somewhere you, do you still say the rosary every day? Every day. Yeah. Yeah. Every night. It's amazing. Yeah. I don't, yeah. People don't know that about me. I mean, I've done a couple of interviews a few years ago about it and I, and I, you know, told about that, but I don't speak about it that much. Um, because I catch a lot of flack, believe it or not, from um, sort of like the evangelical Christian crowd. Mm. There's a lot of them that don't, they, they throw a lot of hate my way for being Catholic because they don't think that as a Catholic, I'm Christian, but, right. but I am. It's like the first Christian faith, but I don't, I don't like getting into arguments with people. And um, so I just kind of keep it to myself. I I, yeah, I, I, I went to I Catholic sc- I went to Catholic school pretty much my whole life, so I get it until college. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, so oh, that's I, cool. I got yeah Italian <laughs> Catholic, so I'm in the same yeah, boat Italian. as you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We gotta we gotta stick together, right? The hell with yes. everyone else. So <laughs> you know, it's it's crazy because it it does serve prayer can serve as a sort of meditation and a calming, and that's what I think you know most people don't fully understand, and it's a lot like going to the gym or a diet. I tell people all the time. Right don't dive in head for you don't need to go to bible study every night if that's not what you're about you know don't right. do it it's going to overwhelm you and you're going to drop out you know make right. it something that's an important part of your life and and carve out time for it and you know it's it's not easy to carve out that time to keep your head straight and we all need that right. from time to time especially in this environment you know um that's it, right it's it's not easy right now and no it's not what everybody going through, what they're going through, you know, of course, what starts to creep into everybody's head right now, Donna, is, is the cure worse than the disease? Like what we're doing, is it worse than the disease? And I think it was a necessary right. step because they were so nervous about the spread. And right. I think now everybody's just got that itch, like it's a week before Christmas and everybody kind of wants to get back into the workforce. Right. But, you know, there was no knowing that this was going to happen. And I think, you know, the at the very least, we, we have to be cognizant of people out there that they don't know what to do. They don't know where to turn. And, and right. the, the church has been right out at the forefront. They've been speaking a lot about people getting back in the churches, getting back to, right. you know, their zero, it's you know, important. yeah, finding right. their zero. And that's really important to your mental toughness and just your durability as a human being in your mind and in your soul. And it's not mm-hmm. easy to do that. You know, that's something yeah. that's, that's very difficult for some people to find their way back. What helped right. you find your way back to getting to zero, you know, getting back grounded. You mean after my, after I filed for divorce or just, yeah. Was there like an aha moment? Like I just need to go back. Like, you know, I have people on and they're like, you know, I hadn't gone to the gym in three months and then I just looked at my sneakers in the corner and I said, I need to put those on and go. (laughs) Was there like that? No, there was nothing. Not really. It was just, I was just meeting. uh, I just felt very alone and it was very difficult. um, And I, I felt like nobody understood. And then I remembered, you know, I'm never alone because Mm. I thought, so I just, um, I just, you know, found my way back Mm. and there was no, there was no moment or anything. And, you know, and now with this whole quarantine and stuff, I, um, I was doing this all along anyway, but it's even more important now that, uh, before I go to sleep at night, while I'm laying in bed and then before I get up out of bed in the morning, every morning, I think about things that I'm grateful for. Um, because there's always something, you know, you can always find the positive in something and you can always find something to be grateful for. Just even if, if, if everything's going wrong in your life and, uh, you can still get up out of bed and stand on your two legs and walk Mm -hmm. to the bathroom or wherever you're going to go you could be grateful for that because some people don't even, can't even do that. Some people can't stand up and walk, you know, um, just be grateful for the fact that you can 
you know, that you have clothes to wear or just little things. There's always something you can be grateful for. And I, I feel like that starts my day off on a positive note and it ends it on a positive note. So I do that every day. Yeah, it's, it's so important to carve out the time. And, you know, it's like anything else. When people say I don't have the time, I'm like, bullshit, right. it's, it's there, you know. You do have the time. Well, it's not what we have now. It's time. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, that's all there is. We're just sitting around for the people that that aren't still, you know, working. Um, like uh, in the entertainment industry, but he's kind of sitting around now. There's not a lot to do. So um, you've got nothing but time. I want to I want to get your opinion on a couple of things. Is it is is was yeah. this a good thing in some ways in terms of people being home and being able to reevaluate? Is there some good? What's the good that comes? I out think of this? for some people, for like some reset. people, it's a good thing, but for other people, it's scary um, because they don't have income now yeah. and there's nothing in the bank and um, how are they going to afford food now because they can't work? So maybe it's not for those people. It's not a good thing. It's a very frightening time. Um, and they're having to rely on the government to help them, which the government's all backed up, you know, with all of these requests and, and filing for unemployment and filing for this and that, the end of disaster relief and stuff. They're bogged down. So who knows how long that's taking, you know, that process is taking to get those people help. But in the meantime, I'm sure it's a very frightening experience. And then there's others who are kind of, you know, in a, a good place financially and they can afford to to not have work for a month or two and still be fine and for those people yeah maybe this is a good thing they can sort of sit back and reevaluate their life and what they're doing and uh, what's important to them so i think that there's a big mix of of um, reactions and and stuff out there depending on people's place in life um and uh you know Mm. and then there's people sort of in between that maybe they're being able to scrape by, but but it gives them the opportunity to sort of reevaluate and think about what's important and who's important. And uh, um, for me, I'm almost kind of liking this isolation in a way. I know that sounds weird, but it's, no, not at all. That's why I bring it up. I'm kind of liking the solitude because um, you know, as you know, I'm, you're you, it, Los Angeles is not the best place to. Um, to make friends and find quality people they are here but you know it's a it's a weird kind of town for that and i've had to cut a lot of people out of my circle and my i always am i'm always shrinking my circle because i like to have you know um i just don't like toxic people in my life so i'm always cutting people out of my circle and um <laughs> so I don't know. This is almost kind of a nice opportunity to, to do that and sort of reevaluate who it is that you like spending time with and who's important to you and who's, who, who's adding to your quality of life and who's not. I'm really curious. What's your, what's your criteria for cutting people out of your circle? Like what, like I know from me, right. I had a, a Navy SEAL Ray Cash here on the show and he threw the question back at me and I said, Ray, you know what? I said, you know what it is for me? If you're not a bridge builder in life, you don't build bridges. Yeah. I can't have yeah. you in my life. And that's the stage right. where I'm at. You know, I understand everybody has drama, right? Like I don't take, um, the former bodybuilder, Jay Cutler, he'll say like, uh, Jay will be like, people call me with their problems. I hang the phone up. Cause I don't, you know, I don't take that hard <laughs> line. I'm like, you know, and I love yeah. Jay, but like, you know, I, I take the line of like, if you're not building bridges and I, you know, I get the feeling or the vibe that you just content to burn bridges behind you. What I always say, it isolates you Donner and puts you on an Island and I can't, it's lonely on that Island. I can't be on that yeah. Island with you. And that's what yeah. I look for. It's usually a, a, a huge red flag for me. Now I get it. Sometimes you just have, you just don't get along with people, but if they're perpetually bridge burners, I can't have them in my life. That's like my biggest yeah. there. But what, what is your criteria? What do you look for? Um, you know, it, it's, I, I don't, it, I'm not a one strike and you're out kind of person. I'm more three strikes and you're out. And um, I think that for me, it's just, it has to do with toxicity. And I can't, uh, I don't, li- I like my peace. Um, and I like to live my life in, in peace. And um, as far as having people in my inner circle, I can't have toxic people in there. And once they just prove themselves to be toxic, um, and 
you know, tons of drama and, you know, uh, just, just, I, I like to be around nice people. Um, and I don't include people that I work with in that category because mm. obviously there's going to be toxic people that you have to work with and that's just, you know, something you have to deal with. But I'm talking about my inner circle of close friends that I allow into my personal life on a daily basis. And I'm very, very picky about that. And, um, you know, once I feel like they're um, sort of peace destroyers um, consistently, I, I can't have them in my life anymore. Right. Um, because I just, I value, especially at this time in my life, I just value my peace um, and just being able to, to be happy. And that's, and that's really all that's important to me um, right now. And so if, if they're against that and they are too causing too many problems and too much drama and bringing that toxicity into my life, they have to go. Isn't it crazy mm-hmm. how your goals shift as you get older and why? Isn't it, so, it, it's, it really it's is. crazy, right? Like the stuff that you yeah. were told when you were younger, you're like, no, I'll always want something, fa-, you know, whatever, or whatever, you know, you, you like, yeah. you tend to go through those phases where some, for some people they like stuff, they got to have stuff. And then as you get older, yeah. you know, you're kind of like, nah, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm content with this. Like I'm good. Right. You know, you start, right. you start to, I mean, know, the different things make you happy or make me happy now. Like I, I love just going in the kitchen and cooking something or baking something or cause I love to cook. And you know, when, uh, when you're raised in the South, for me anyway, girls started cooking when they're like 10 and you learn to cook from your mom and your grandmother. And, um, that's just sort of what you do. And, um, I enjoy it. So that's even if I'm by myself and there's nobody that's there to eat it, I like to cook. I go in there and I cook or I cook or I bake a, a cake or something. It makes me feel happy. Right. Or just standing in front of the refrigerator eating some blueberries or just simple little things like that make me happy. And um, when I was in my 20s, I, it was like, what party can I go to? And, you know, mm. how much alcohol can I drink? And just uh, drama was almost fun. People causing drama. And now it's just changed. Like you said, things shift when you when you get older. And you start and, to care um, less. Like, yeah, you just, you about lose, what yeah. people think. Yeah. I've noticed that. Yeah. I was so wrapped up in what people thought about me when I was on Baywatch, and people are mean. The media is mean, and just people like on on the internet are just in in the comments. I had to stop reading them because they're just so mean, and I took it to heart. And I was like, oh my gosh, people really think that about me, and uh, people are saying this, and people are saying that and now. John, I don't care. Mm. I just don't care what people think. I know who I am and my inner circle knows who I am and I don't care about the rest. It's crazy. I I think about it. I'm like, geez, when I was 20, life was so different. And now you're just like, okay, cool. Like, I don't care. Like, right. I, I've learned right. to say you win, I lose more than anything other phrase. I'm like, <laughs> you win, too. I lose. Uh, great. <laughs> awesome. You know, but it's hard, you know, you, you obviously uh, have, very deep roots and you're grounded and it, it, that's not easy to do you obviously have your feet planted squarely underneath you and I think um it's very hard to find that especially as you said in, in LA and in Hollywood and you've done a little of everything in Hollywood and yeah. LA. It, you know I looked back at, at, at some of the work you've been doing it's phenomenal stuff and you've always stayed true to what I think uh, is what you were brought up into into the world in the south and you know you're you're doing all of that now and I think having those roots or coming back to some of those roots and being what you are and it it keeps you ground it keeps your feet underneath you and I think that that's important that's something that's lost now on like you know getting into some of the fun stuff and it's amazing right like so I had I've had like you know, you might not know him, but Mike O'Hearn on, and he, he's a bodybuilder, been in cover of magazines, all that jazz. Mike seemed to find the the secret to reversing aging, and it looks like you did too. How, <laughs> you know, what's your secret? What do you do to stay in the condition that you're always, you, it seems like you're camera ready right now. I looked at pictures <laughs> of you and I was like, you know, I said, I said, she could go do Baywatch if they rebooted it right now. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I wasn't in shape for a little while when, um, about six years ago, my mom got sick with cancer 
and um, I got really um, depressed about it. And then she passed, and I started eating, and I stopped working out, and I put on a lot of weight, um, a lot for me. I'm only five four, and I gained a lot of weight. And so um, once I kind of emerged from that grief, I looked in the mirror, and I was like, I, I didn't recognize myself. So. I set out on a mission to lose it and just get back in shape and stay in shape and not, you know, have that happen to me anymore. So I did and I lost it all and I got in some of the conditions um, I've ever been in and I just have maintained that. So I'm a, I, I'm a vegan. Um, I maintain a vegan diet and I do that for uh, you know, animal cruelty reasons. Um, but it has a nice side benefit of keeping me healthy too. Um, and my skin clear and all that stuff. And, um, and I work out, I just, I, I enjoy working out. I like, like how it makes me feel. And, you know, it, it just, it, when you, when you are active and you work out, it, you know, causes you to, to produce endorphins and that makes you happy, Mm. you know? People who work out are happy. And for me, anyway, that works. And, um, yeah, that just that, just my vegan diet and working out um, and staying active because I, I don't know, I just like how it feels. I like how I look. And um, I don't know, that's just my lifestyle. Yeah, you kind of can make a habit of it. You can make a habit of it either way. You can make a habit of sitting on the couch and eating and watching TV, or you can make a habit of, being active and eating healthy and stuff. And it, it just becomes part of your way. You the, know, the vegan and um, keto thing has become so huge, both sides of the aisle. It's, it seems like they both, that they're extremes, right. And they both seem to have found their groove, but you it's know, so much easier though, to be vegan these days, John, because they, the, the vegan oh, sort yeah. of sub, meat substitutes and cheese substitutes, have come a long way from where they were even five years ago. So you don't, I don't miss it. I don't miss anything. Everything to me tastes the same. Yeah. Um, as when I was eating meat, the, the meat substitutes are amazing. Um, I don't you, bother. You can't tell the difference. Yeah. I don't bother with any of that. So like I'm from new England, so I could eat fish all the time. Uh-huh. So I could, uh-huh. I, you know, there are times where I've gotten into this battle with friends where I'm like, I haven't had, meat in a while now do mm-hmm. I, I love a good hamburger or a piece of elk or something sure of course mm-hmm. but you know being from new england i'd much rather have a lobster or some shrimp and i know that's not vegan right. but i can shy away from the red meat for a long period of time only because i love right. i love fish and i feel less bloated on it i feel less i feel so much exactly. better and that's something there's bodybuilders now that are vegan i mean there's so much you know i know guys pro hunting pro everything that are vegan it's just a lifestyle choice and for some people they just a, a, agree with it you know uh their body agrees with it more and it's clearly worked yeah. for you uh yeah. i didn't know if you had some secret where you drank like four gallons of water before 8 a.m. or I didn't know if there was like no a- you know what I really should drink more water I don't I don't drink enough water but yeah. I never get thirsty no I have no real secret nothing I just you know I think honestly going back to the toxic people thing staying away from toxicity in your life in my life I think is another factor um, to, that keeps me healthy and you know happy and uh looking the way i do yeah it's important i mean look once you find your groove with your diet in your head you're you're two-thirds of the way there right and then it's just finding your outlet and you you know staying busy from there now right you know it's it's so easy to just kind of say to people you know oh well just be a vegan you have to ease into that too to everybody listening nothing is overnight so if you're listening to this you have to ease into it i'm sure it took you time to ease into that type of diet and lifestyle and get used to it and acclimate your body to it well the veganism actually was kind of sudden because um i was doing Sam Simon's podcast when he was around and um, he had me watch this um, undercover undercover footage that LCA that last chance for animals Mm. took um, at a factory farm. And I had no idea what that was like. I had no idea about factory farms or what went on there, what they look where my food came from, where that meat on my plate came from. 
um, I just ate it. I didn't, you know, because I, I grew up in the South. We're yeah. eating fried chicken and, you know, barbecue. And so um, after he had me watch that, I went vegan from that moment forward. I couldn't eat meat anymore or anything um, because it was just such a shock. Um, I had no idea what it was like for those animals. And um, that was my turning point. So I just, uh, that was it. I mean, I went cold turkey. But like you said, not everybody can do that. And mm. you don't have to. Some people, you know, give up one thing. Give up, you know, red meat for a while. See how that goes. And then give up chicken or, you know. The hardest thing for me to give up was cheese because I love cheese. Mm. Um, but now, you know, I, you just, you adjust. Yeah. Um, yeah, the cheese would be a so. tough one. People don't understand the Italian culture and what cheese means. Oh my gosh, it, everything is cheese. Everything cheesy. Is cheesy. You live on <laughs> Everything it. Yeah, is cheesy. They, they don't understand. <laughs> I don't think I could give up the cheese and, I, and I'd have yeah. to keep fish in there, but... If yeah. I lived on the coast again, like, uh, you yeah. know, I'd live on fish and cheese would be like my life. But, you know, right. I mean, the Mediterranean diet, right? So, you know. Right, right. You know, that's how I, w I would be. I would love that. But, again, yeah. you know, I mean, I'm in Vegas. At least there's decent food there. So, you know. Yeah, you've got tons of stuff there. A lot of options. But, you know, yeah. it's crazy. So, this, you know, you go through this transformation. This stuff happens. And mm -hmm. along the way, like I said, keeping your values, you still stayed, you know, you, you own a handgun in LA that's there. And, and like, I've got a lot of guns yeah, <laughs> I've and, got an arsenal here and you love shooting and I do. you take heat for that. I was, you take heat for that from people. Oh yeah. Oh, tons. I can't be too outspoken on social media about it because I get just slammed. But, um, yeah, most of my friends don't are, are not fans of guns or gun ownership and i grew up in the south i grew up around guns i i enjoy shooting my guns i enjoy owning them and you know cleaning them and just it's i don't know it's my it's my right it's our right mm. to to own them i'm a responsible registered gun owner who's been professionally trained and um you know i it is what it is. I, I make no apologies for that. I would have thought, though, Donna, and give me your opinion on this. I, you know, uh -huh. there's a little bit of that Keanu effect. I would have thought with Keanu being, you know, he doesn't have to be outspoken, but getting out there and training and, and showing that and being willing to put that out there. And, and more Hollywood mm -hmm. people are. Is there beginning mm -hmm. to become a little bit of a shift? And just this past month, we saw it was some obscene number. I know every gun store in L.A. was cleaned out. Oh, yeah, is, is, empty. Yeah, is there a, sh a little bit of a shift, like a little groundswell? Um, not that I've seen in my personal life. Um, maybe there has been, but I'm not aware of it. Um, I, 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 I know that the gun stores were cleaned out, the ammo's been cleaned out, but I'm thinking that maybe that might... We may have lost Donna. We'll get her back. She might be gone. Are you there? Oh, you're there. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I'm right. sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know that the people that were cleaning out the gun stores and buying the ammo were new gun owners or, or people that were previously against guns that now wanted them as much as maybe they were current gun owners that were just, you know, stocking up or something. I don't know that there's been a shift. It'd be nice if there had been, but... Right. I'm still in California and, you know, in generally speaking, most Californians are anti-gun. So, um, I do feel like I'm in a minority out here, especially when I, I, my, most of my friends are anti-gun. And so we can't really discuss my, my, you know, love for guns and shooting because they're against it and they frown on that. So I, we have to talk about other stuff. So where do you think that comes from, though? Do you think that there, because look, you're, you grew up in it. Your, your dad was military. Yeah. Do you yeah. think that that comes from just a, a fear of not understanding them? Because that's what I come back to, Don. I'm always like, I listen to the laws and some of the stuff they pass, and I'm like, these people don't know anything about the industry or about that right. <laughs> do you think it's ignorance or is it, you know? Honestly, I, and I'll get slammed a little bit for this one, but. I really think that there's an agenda mm. um, 
against guns and an agenda to sort of disarm um, the you know Americans. And I think that um, there's a lot of sort of fear mongering that goes on in the media around gun ownership, and most of the population kind of buys into that because people are led by the media, by the you know by mass media and. Um, I think that whatever they kind of plug into people's heads is what they start thinking. Um, I know that sounds crazy, but that's just how I feel. I feel like they make owning guns sound horrible. And so people think that it's a bad thing. And I don't, I don't know that just a, a group or two here and there can change their minds because the media keeps shoving down everybody's throats that, that gun ownership is bad. And I, I try to believe mm-hmm. in the positive. I, I think a little bit of a shift is coming. I don't think it's going to be a big, one. I would love that. Yeah. I would really love that. And I think, I think it's going to Corvid has helped with that a little bit in terms of, you know, people understanding fear, right. And fear, right. fear is a mechanism. It triggers reactions in our body. And for some people, they went out and bought toilet paper. Right. And for some people, they yeah. went out and bought toilet paper and guns and some people bought guns. So, you know, I think, you know, that desire to protect your home and what you've worked hard for is starting to kick in with some people because I've talked to, yeah. I talked to a lot of FFLs and a lot of them are family owned companies, you know, from your days down South, they're family owned FFLs. They're the great, great, businesses and you walk in yeah. and you talk to these people for five minutes and you realize you know you get to know the customers that have been coming in and so many mm-hmm. of them were I talked to one guy in Riverside he was on the show warrior one tactical and he said John the amount of new gun owners and and people that really are, and, you know he said the number's insane so I, I wow yeah I, whether or not they're gonna come out out of the closet, so to speak. Uh, I don't even care if they come out of the closet. Yeah. That would be great if that's if that's the case. And you know, I do believe in that Keanu effect a little bit. And and even uh, Halle Berry has come out and she's been training and shooting a lot. And you know, yeah. I think there's that effect. You know, and I think you can chalk it up as trade craft or whatever you want. But I would have thought with the rise of that and just mixed martial arts becoming you know the norm, jujitsu, MMA. Muay Thai, you know, I just see a little bit of a self-defense shift coming. I don't think it's going to be huge, Donna, and I don't think it's going to filter into your, you know, your circles, and I don't mean this directly, the the circles at the Ivy, you know what I'm saying? But I think the shift is coming uh, to some degree, and I think you can't go Well, I hope you're right. Yeah. I don't think people can go to the mat, so to speak, you know, saying no to it. You know, I think they have to be a little open to it now and I think that's the start of something right it's like right, respecting right. someone else's right because there was I agree with you there was no respect for it before you know no no you and know. you know I, but I know that there's interest I mean even in my circle there's interest even if they say verbally that they're anti-gun when I go to the range I always invite them to come and a lot of them are interested and some of them do come along because they want to see what it's like to hold a gun and shoot at a target and it's fun it is fun and they have a fun time so i i mean i know that the interest is there and i think that that is at least a good start and like you said with the keanu effect and stuff um maybe that can cause a shift and if a shift is happening i'm really happy to hear that yeah um i was i was really actually happy to hear all of the gun stores being cleaned out and and the ammo and stuff because I know that you can't own a gun or buy ammo unless you, you know, you're registered and you, you, you go through the, all the, the, the right. It's a know. nightmare. California right. is a mess. Is, Virginia is a mess. Yeah. Right. There, there's so many right. states that they've just butchered the laws and they've made it almost yeah. impossible. But, but the people that are getting them, at least, you know, they've gone through that whole rigmarole. It's not just, you know some crazy person that can walk in and buy a gun and that's not what's happening. These are like, you know, upstanding American citizens who are going in and, and buying these guns and ammo and they're registered and that's, 
Yeah, you know, they're doing what they're supposed to do to own it. There's a lot. You know? I think they didn't know that too in this process. There's a lot more hoops to jump through than people think. People think there's like these crazy loopholes. Like you show up and it's yeah. like drive through guns. That's one of the big misconceptions, right? I I just think that that's rampant. You know, I, I think that's like layer one of educating people. Like, hey, no, that's not how it works. Yeah. There's this process, and even in Cali, you guys have a like a ten day wait period too. So, you know, right? Yeah, it's a whole process. But, you know, it's fun to see that. What's your favorite thing to shoot? Uh, my favorite thing is my uh, my Remington 870 pump action 12 gauge. Oof. It's so fun. I mean, it's just the most fun thing um, to shoot. You know, shoot watermelons and jugs of milk and this stuff like that. Go out into the desert. Um, it's got this amazing kick. Um, I don't know. I just, I love the whole pump action. I like having that also as self-defense, home defense, because just the, the sound of the action itself is a deterrent because it's a very, you know, instantly what it's that a sound is. And sound, it, yep. it is. And just that alone can scare somebody away if they hear it behind the door. Absolutely. You know, they hear that action, you hear that, you rack that action and people will run. You don't even need to use it. So I love that. And I love, um, you know, I have uh, an HK, P2000 um, mm -hmm. that I love, 9 millimeter, and I really like that one a lot. Um, but my favorite one is the, the Remington, the pump action. Um, uh, I, I like the – Remington makes a great product, actually. Um, yeah. I was on the phone with the, the senior VP the other day. They make phenomenal mm -hmm. stuff, and they own the Marlin line, too, lever action, which is a passion of mine. I love lever guns. It's oh. something I'm, yeah, and believe it or not, I'm actually a huge lever gun fan. But, yeah, I mean, it's great to get out there. It's a huge stress reliever, too. I don't think anybody ever realizes that when you get out there and you're able to run yeah, it is. shots. It takes, takes a lot. Right? Yeah, it takes a lot of edge off the day in the week or whatever. You know, I don't get out there enough, but it's a lot of fun to get out there and, and dump some rounds. The best thing to shoot is a fridge. You mentioned watermelons, but an old fridge is the best to screw oh. around with because they're so – Oh, wow. Yeah, that's the way fridges are built. They're a lot of fun to, to shoot at, but – it's great to get out there. And I noticed you, you know, plug out to Los Angeles, Cerakote. It looks like you get out there a couple times with those guys and, and use some of their yeah. products. And it seems like they do a great job. I, I, you know, I, I love them. They're awesome. Yeah. It's just great to get out there. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't surprise me the, the run on guns, but it's going to be interesting to see how that, that plays out and, and who gets converted and who doesn't, but we'll just have to wait and see. I think it's going to be, yeah, it is a wait and see. A wait I think every see. day right now is a wait and see. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. We'll we'll see how that goes. Now, yeah. I want to switch gears to what mm -hmm. you've done everything. You've done producing, you've done directing, you've done, you know, acting, you've done the magazines, you know, mm -hmm. is there you know, what advice would you give to people now in the social media era? You know, people are coming up through social media. Do you miss right. the old conventional way or what advice, you know, would you know, you I miss a lot of things about it. Um, but it is, you're right. It's different. It's things have changed with social media and it's never, it's not going to go away. Um, it's here to stay. So it's, it's very different. Um, I don't know. I, it, it's, it's strange because social media influencers are now becoming sort of a new celebrities almost. Um, and it's weird because it's only social media. Um, but I don't think that things have changed so much as far as like acting and stuff like mm. that. Um, although before, you know, if you're, if they producers and directors look to see how many followers you have on social media mm -hmm. before they hire you, a lot of them do. So that's an interesting, change. I guess a change yeah, that I don't love um, because it's kind of unfair because people are now not so much just, hired based on their talent or their skill or their performance the, another factor is now how many followers do you have mm -hmm. and i don't necessarily like that but you know it's here to stay and it is what it is yeah we saw magazines die even in our industry essentially there's little totally little magazines left right um and their circulation is less than some people's following so that's where kind of following becomes a thing like like i don't need a magazine you know what i mean it's like right. what, what are you going to get out of it so you know it's going to be interesting a lot of people are speculating like will cable last right and is streaming right. going to be where it goes and we talk about this a lot believe it or not donna in our industry 
as a whole like is is streaming and podcast see i i just see such hope in streaming and podcasting that's why i think a lot of actors and actresses are going to netflix because it's on demand if i want to watch something i can watch it it's there you know i can i can watch it right now and it's i like that yeah i just i don't see how kate you you know i've heard rumors around the industry just because i'm tied into this side of it where people are paying for new spots now on on nationally syndicated news networks like they're paying to get those 30 second spots because they need the money and they need the revenue to come in there so it's not the other way around anymore where you might get paid to write blogs or whatever they're they're struggling and they need to make ends meet but they're also still viable enough that they can use it as a and that's a that's a scary sign if there's a lot of truth to it i know some that are for sure but I mean, do you see? Do you foresee cable TV? I mean, not necessarily maybe um, HBO, and, and you know those will survive on Netflix and Showtime, and everything right. else. they'll survive in Amazon. So what I mean is, I guess I'd, we'd call it terrestrial TV. Do you see that surviving? It's kind of. I know it's. I don't know. I don't see it. It's hard, it's, right? It's Hulu and Netflix is where it's at, and it's like you said, it's because you can sit and watch things whenever you want to watch them. And, um, I don't know the days of like when I grew up and the wizard of Oz came on once a year and we would all wait for it to come on. Oh, it's going to come on at 7 PM on whatever channel and everybody would be sitting there waiting for it to come on. It's not like that anymore. It's not. And, And it's scary because I watched, I think it was like the Irishman on Netflix and it was like direct to net. It was amazing. And I'm like, this is a total, this was Marty Scorsese doing a total Netflix production and it's, all right. right there right and i'm like uh, why wouldn't more people do this now i don't know what the payout and the numbers look at because i'm not knee deep i'm not me not neither in that business but you know it's it's interesting to see that shift and i just think streaming and look to me in my opinion it all ends with a search bar right like at the end of the day that's where the following piece does start to matter and your seo and all that does start to matter so to, right. to me, you know, I look at it this way. Google's the number one used search bar. YouTube's the second most used search bar on the Internet and so on and so forth. And, of course, Captain Moneybags and Amazon's not far behind. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, I just look at it now and the money they're investing in that streaming world and what they're getting into. And I look at podcasting right. as just on-demand radio. That's really all it is, you know, if, if you want right. to listen to someone or whatever. So it's only a matter of time, in my opinion, and it's just going to be a matter of jockeying around to figure out where how people make money and how people get paid because right. that's going to be the key thing. But it's, I think in our lifetime, we're going to see that shift on. I think that's coming. Yeah, I, I actually think that you're right. Um, I, I think it's inevitable. We see the, the way that it's going now and it's working and everybody likes it. Um, so, you know, you go with what works and what people like. Well, yeah. I guess so that's another wait and see, but I think that you're right about that. Now, another question, a picture, a picture was posted about you. It kind of came, came out, you were out and you bought the toilet paper. You contributed oh, to yeah. the toilet paper <laughs> craze. Um, you know, that's you, when it all had just first started. You, bra- you braved the storm and they nabbed you as a toilet paper buyer. Right. Did you, the question right. is, did you buy enough? I, I bought enough. I mean, I, I, I own, but just enough. I didn't like go nuts and buy tons like everybody was doing at that time. And this was before they were limiting purchases to one per household or something. Um, I just bought just what I needed. <laughs> I think um, it's a four pack. That's all you got. <laughs> it was a four pack. It was a four pack. <laughs> it now, wasn't even the good kind. It was like all the good it, kind was sold. It, yeah, so. it was like the wool brand. It was wool. <laughs> <laughs> it was like some fly or... Yeah. So, you know, everybody had an indulgence that they went nuts by and what was yours? You know, I didn't, I, I didn't have one. Um, I, honestly, I, I have, um, for years I've always kept, uh, an emergency food supply and water supply. Um, and that kind of, you know, survival kind of stuff. Prepper. Um, yeah, I've got everything that I need. I, I was like, I know what I have and I, I didn't change. I didn't have to go out and buy a bunch of anything because I had stuff already. I've got enough food and water and supplies and stuff to last me six months. That's perfect. That's, that's about the, yeah. I think everybody's going to be doing that now. I don't think that's, yeah. I don't think that's like yeah. big, you know, news. I think everybody's going to at least be doing 90 days worth of right. supplies. 
It looks right. the second fridge, something along those lines. Right. Something. And mine's like that food storage stuff. It's the freeze dried um, food mm. storage. I that lasts for thirty years. I've had that for a long time and I keep it stored just in case, you know, the zombie apocalypse happens or something and then I'm just prepared. What's your weapon of choice during the zombie apocalypse? <laughs> My weapon of choice? Chainsaw. What, as, <laughs> no, I'm going to have to go with my 12 gauge. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> has, my I don't think everybody who's watched Walking Dead has played that game in their head. Like, what would you go with? <laughs> you know? Exactly. Uh, you well, know. you know, I feel pretty safe in my home because I've, um, it's, it's gated and, uh, you know, I've got a, a you know, it, a perimeter around my house and security cameras and nobody can get into my, my, um, property. That's perfect. So I feel pretty good. And then if somehow they are able to figure out a way in, I am armed and not that I would use it, but just my, my, um, just like I told you, the, the sound of the act racking the action alone is enough. And, um, but you know, if it comes down to it, I, I will protect myself and my family, um, our lives. I think that's important. And I think having that mindset initially is super important. Now, mm-hmm. The next, I want to, I want to ask about this before we wrap. I don't want to forget to bring this up. The dogs, okay. the dog stuff is important to you. And yeah, very much. Not just dogs, it's the animal, the whole animal. The whole thing. Animal. Now, but especially yeah. the dogs, I notice is a big thing with you. You know, dogs are loved in our business, you know, in, in yeah. my side of the house, everybody, you know, loves dogs and you know, did you have an incident or was there something that triggered the, especially the dog side of it? Because I, I don't know that it's, I mean, the only thing that I've can't like, like helped uh, lead protests about and stuff is the dog meat festivals right. that happen in, uh, you know, the Bachnall festival and, um, and, and those Yulene dog meat festivals, those, um, are something that I, I'm very heavily involved in protesting against. Um, but it's, it's really, it's all, um, uh, and the cat meat too. Mm. They do cat meat. Um, so no, I mean, I just, I, I, when I grew up in the South, I, I lived right across the street from this wooded area and this lake. And I used to, um, constantly be bringing home a little wildlife that was injured or something or, or little young wildlife that had been abandoned. And I'd always nurse them back to health and, um, it was just something that I grew up doing and I just always had this love for animals and wildlife. And, um, then I, I got the opportunity to, to start work with, um, last chance for animals. And I've been helping them ever since. Um, just because I, I enjoy seeing the, the changes that get made by them. Um, now do you have like 50 critters running around the house or, you know, I, I almost always do, but the dogs that I adopt, I always adopt the older ones because nobody wants those. They all want the puppies. So I always um, historically have adopted older dogs and, um, you know, they, they die. Mm. That, that's just the, the thing. And then I, I'll adopt another one and they're older and then eventually they, are, they pass too. And after my mom died um, and then I lost another member of my family. Then, like two weeks after that, my dog, my favorite dog ever, died. He was he was adopted, and I I had to take a break um, from adopting um, dogs because I need I need a break from from death for a little while. So I'm just on a break right now. But um, I I'm, I've been thinking lately about about adopting again, maybe adopting a couple more dogs. Do you go by um, breed? Is there a breed that hits home with you or is it just, no, no, I don't care about breeds. Um, and I don't really care about size. Uh, I love them all. I mean, I know there's even pit bulls have a stigma, but I love pit bulls. There's the sweetest dogs and, um, no, not, there's no particular breed. I just go by their personality and, um, I don't know. I like older dogs. I love puppies too, but I know the older ones need a home desperately because nobody wants them. And so those are usually the ones I, I gravitate towards. Yeah. People, people love the dogs more than they love people, especially. Yeah. In my right. Business. Well, I mean, people these days are hard to like mm-hmm. sometimes. So, mm-hmm. I mean, dogs are just so that all they do is they live for your love and attention. That's it. They don't, they're not demanding and they don't, 
you know, mistreat you. They're just full of love. So I don't know that they're not demanding Donna. <laughs> <laughs> well, cats are more demanding, I think, but right. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's definitely, <laughs> definitely. but yeah. Yeah, and so, I've had them all. So. so it's it's right now. I have a bird oh, no. that I've had for about eighteen years. <laughs> it's a Maximilian Pionis from South America, and her name is Charlie. And I, she just is with me all the time. She rides around on my shoulder, which people say you're not supposed to shoulder your bird, but I do. And she's just the sweetest thing ever. And um, so she's part of the family. Has been for going in 20 years it's great to bring awareness to those especially something like the the dog meat it's great to bring awareness yeah. to some of that stuff in cats you know and yeah. I, it's something rescuing animals is really like you know it's a passion project to bring them into your home yeah. and, and take care of them but yeah, yeah i mean it's it's amazing to you know keep you know keep bringing awareness to that i think that that's like something that's you know, it's easily like becomes a vogue thing to do. People do it for a little while and then it fades away. But I think that's that's a drum that always needs to be rung, you know, and it's right. it's so important. It's a commitment mm-hmm. and a responsibility because you've got to commit for the life of that animal, not just until you, you know, it loses its its the newness and then you want to get rid of it and get something else, which a lot of people do. You you that's the ones that I don't like is when people buy a puppy or something because it's fashionable or they buy a chihuahua because mm-hmm. Paris Hilton was carrying one around in her purse and then they get tired of it and they want to give it away or adopt it out. And the shelters are, you know, they fill up with animals that people just drop off because they didn't want to care for them anymore. Well, um, and that breaks my heart. So they can all <clears> move <throat> into Donna's house now. Yeah, they can move in here. <laughs> so, before, you know, I, I get, we wrap up, I want to ask you, through the years, I ask, you know, every guest as you made your push into social media the last couple of years, it, what's yeah. the creepiest, you know, you ever come across people that don't know who you are, or they like, they get weird in the, the direct messages and all that. What's the creepiest thing you've oh, ever had happen to you? Yeah. Not, not stalkers, <laughs> just weirdos. I ask every, every guest this, what's the weirdest DM? Who slides in the craziest? Oh, weird. Well, there, I get a lot of weird stuff. I've had to stop checking the, the DMs um, the lately. De- the because, dead files. Oh, my God. Yeah, those. <laughs> those ones are the ones I stopped checking. <laughs> because I was getting stuff like um, this. People, uh, men obsessed with my feet. Oh, the feet thing comes up a lot. Oh, my gosh. What the hell? I, I'm, I'm like, please, I'll pay you to send me pictures of your feet. Oh God! Uh, will I, you please post another picture that shows your foot and show show the bottom part of your foot? I'm like, are you what? I I had, I had Lena Michalik on Jerry Michalik's daughter, who's a pro shooter. He shoots for Smith and Wesson. He's one of the fastest shooters that ever lived. He's a legend. Yeah. And Lena shoots for six hour now. And Lena said, "I'm on Wiki feet. Like it's the weirdest thing." Like, what? Yeah, and people obsess over my feet, and I'm like, okay. I had Kendall Jones on. She's a hunter, female. Um, She was talking about how people ask for dirty clothes. Dirty clothes. So I gave her an idea. I said, what you guys got to do, all you ladies, is you should make a menu and sell the clothes but give the money to charity. Like you could put like Donna DiArico's old gym socks for like 30 bucks and give the money to St. Jude's or something. And – I, I or give it to one of your donation. The first woman that does that as like a menu is going to break the internet. I'm telling you. Oh my gosh. And just Crazy. donate it all to like, uh, you know, one of the dog charities or something. I'm telling you. Yeah. I, yeah. I, either last chance for animals or, um, or an, another, uh, animal charity that I have. Yeah. Like they'll buy your old gym socks, Donna. They'll buy your, <laughs> Wow. <laughs> They'll buy like a used hoodie for, you know what I mean? And if wow. you're anything like me, you got tons of this crap laying around, you know I mean? Like clothes are like, you go through so many, but like, it's, it's funny to me, you know, I, I had one person on who was talking about jail mail. They get mail from prisoners. It's crazy. I'm oh. like, how do they even get your address? It's insane. It, I've but, never gotten mail from a prisoner. This whole like cottage industry. I forget what guest it was. Someone, one of my listeners may know there was one, recently i had on i forget who it was it was a uh, someone it'll come come to me but she said a young person had 
reached out to her and wanted like to see her and, and he was like 12 see her nude or whatever and, and she goes you keep it up and i'm gonna i'm gonna call your mother or something and he like lost his like he was like no 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 don't do that don't do that i was like dying laughing <laughs> it was one of my more recent guests i can't remember who it was but oh, like wow. yeah there's you know that's become a thing and it's become like a, a for some reason I don't know what it is. People feel like they're anonymous and going back to social media. One of my things has always been, I I want everybody to be forced to use their real name or real business so they can't hide behind a fake name or a fake business. Right. And that's probably my one restriction I have for, for social media that I would love to see implemented. And, you know, I've said it for a while. Um, Oh, I think it was, I think it was Casey Curry who I had on one of the females. Um, She, she said, you know, something about uh, a young, young kid. And I just think that that's, that's become such a thing. Like I'm anonymous. So I'll say something inappropriate or I'll I'll do some and slide into the DM or whatever. And they think they, they can get access or whatever, but Hey, I think it can be monetized. You know, I think there's a way, you know, put a menu there and say (laughs) it goes towards, you know, uh, you know, the, one of the dog foundations, I think you'll sell out. I mean, that's not a bad idea. No, That's not a bad idea. It's, I mean, if there's a market for it and, and animals, clear, clearly there it. is, there's people, <laughs> clearly there's people that want to sniff your feet. I'm all set, but I think it's, I, I think that there's, and the worst part is they want it like used. That's what's weird to me. I'm like, you know what? I, I, I heard about these vending machines in Japan that sell used, uh, American panties. That can't be real. I believe <laughs> no, it exists, but it can't real. be somebody like real sent underwear. A, somebody sent me a, I don't know. I don't know. You got to get like in on warm it. warm and unwashed American panties in a vending machine. If it goes 100% to charity, I'm all for it. I think there's something there. I, I do. <laughs> I, it's crazy. I guess. I mean, if people could benefit from it, uh, I, I don't I, know. I, I just get the, the, the gay Indians. That's what I get all the time. <laughs> And I'm, all, you know, I'm like, oh, God, like, you know, but yeah, they call it the dark DM, those DMs that you're not friends with. You don't know. Yeah, the, the dark, dark DM. DM. OK, now I know what to call them. Yeah, okay. it's the dark DM. <laughs> dark DM. So, so this is awesome. I had so much fun just rapping. With yeah, you this is great. Phenomenal. And uh, let everybody know where they can find you, what's coming up, what you got going on and uh, how to reach oh, out. Well, on social media, um, it's just my name. You know, without the apostrophe, D O N N A B E R R I C O, um, on Instagram and I'm on Facebook. I'm not on Twitter because there's too much hate on there. I haven't been on there in years. Um, and uh, I'm working on my book, my autobiography. Sick. Um, it, yeah, and um, just uh, I, a couple other things that I that were in the works before the quarantine that are now kind of waiting. Flow. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, so that's it. They can they can uh, catch up with me on social media, and I um, I respond to comment most comments. So um, yeah, check me out there. Why no YouTube? Um, you know, I'm thinking about starting a YouTube. Yeah, why don't? You? Um, because it's unknown territory for me. I don't know a lot about. If you set up a camera a and you just like cook, like I tell people all the time, like YouTube, if it's just like cooking with donna like I th- people will watch yeah i actually have been thinking about doing that i've been thinking about that so i might i might take your your advice and do that i'm telling you i mean i, mean, I tell people yeah. this all the time because I, I, I do have, love to cook yeah i have so many friends that you know they have a following they have a, a you know people that support them i'm like you gotta yeah. get on youtube i'm like you can literally make yeah. your own tv show with a tripod and a cell phone right Right, right. And people don't care. Yeah. Like, I, I, the, like I said, Jay Cutler, the former bodybuilder, is a friend of mine. He does the JTV yeah. thing, right? And it's like Jay mm-hmm. making eggs in the morning. Like, I love Jay. I love you, Jay. But, I, like, you know what I mean? It's like him making eggs in the morning. And, like, wow. he has, like, 100,000 viewers and sponsors. It's wow. on the side of his business. Wow. I go yeah, on YouTube and I'm like, I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, you know, and, and, and I'll go by and, and see him and he'll be like, yeah, jump on. We're doing a little segment for JTV. Like, just come in here and like, you know, like, I'm like, wow. this is like you know, that's it's cr- so cool. Yeah. And he has like a gazillion followers on there, like a million people watch him make eggs. I'm like, wow. Y- you know, it's, I'm serious too. Yeah, maybe I will. 
Maybe it, I will. It's it, and you'd be surprised the amount of people that'll probably tune in and like you just do simple mm-hmm. mundane things. People just want to peek behind the curtain and actually, and see, that's not a bad idea. And yeah. see what you do. Okay. And I, you know, I tell people all the time, you don't have to like have a show. It doesn't have to be a game show. Just right. <laughs> just make some <laughs> eggs or do some, you know, you know. Okay. Uh, literally, if you just do it once a week, the key is the consistency with it, though. Social right. media becomes a pain in the ass. It's you got to stay consistent right, right. with it, you know. But yeah. I'm telling you, if you did something like that yeah maybe i will I'm telling you maybe i will you'll thank Sounds me later cool. so I'll thank you later you'll thank me later i'm telling you <laughs> okay revolutionary idea well <laughs> okay listen this was amazing i can't yeah, thank you thanks enough. for having me it's on. so much fun yeah, and cool. and listen i'm looking forward to what you do and what you got going on awesome. and I, I can't thank you enough and i thank all the sponsors and i thank everyone who supports the show and thank you to volcourts and firearms i appreciate the hell awesome. out of you taking the time and uh i can't thank you enough Yeah, I'll do it again sometime. This is fun.